Hello, my name is Mordred Viking, and I'd like to welcome you to this stream of Sidmere Civilization VI with the Gathering Storm expansion. Now, I haven't played Civ VI since release. Uh, I did not have Rise and Fall. I have not had any of the subsequent DLCs, and at great expense, I've bought it all myself because I never heard bad from uh, Paraxis. So, I guess that's me just saying, hey, I've actually bought this one. So that means something. Um, we are going to start a new game. I am going to be playing as Marley. I know that those of you who have been watching me on Discord know I've been playing a great deal of Marley, but I've been really enjoying them. And there's a lot of hidden facets to that civilization which I'm super thrilled about. And all I can really say is, Venice is back! Venice is back, baby! Oh yes. Um, basically, well, well, we'll talk about what exactly that means, because it's not really Venice, it's Marley, but they have kind of similar mechanics. Um, so we're going to go single player, create game, because I like to fiddle around with this stuff, and it also allows me to show off some of the other settings. We are going to be playing as Mansa Musa of Marley. We have plus one international trade routes when we're in a golden age. And international trade routes gain plus one gold for every flat desert tile. Flat. That's important. Desert hills don't do this. Only flat deserts. But that means that Mali is one of like three civilizations where deserts are actually useful. But wait, there's more. City centers gain plus one faith and plus one food for every adjacent desert and desert hills tiles. So if you build your cities in or next to Okay, music is loud. Yeah, I have none of the sound stuff set up properly. Uh, let's set that out first of all. Let's turn music down. Is that a better level? And scene bean when he starts talking is probably going to be super, super loud. In fact, I'm going to uncheck that. Alright, is that better? I mean, we can tweak things as we go, because I'm pretty sure we'll need to. Um, like I said, I haven't played this since release, and I haven't streamed it since release. Hamtastic intro is allowed anyway. Yeah, that's true. Whoops. Single player. Create game. Mansa Musa. Um, city centers gain plus one faith and plus one food for adjacent hills and desert hills. Now, here's where things get interesting. Mines receive minus one production, but plus four gold. So Mali sucks at producing stuff. They are like the antithesis, antithesis to industrial sieves. However, their mines produce more cash. Their trade produces more cash. They don't have more trade like Venice did, but they do have more money income. You can purchase commercial hub district buildings with faith which is going to be important because your city centers gain faith for being next to or in deserts. And minus 30% production towards constructing buildings or training units. That's a pretty big one. <laughs> That's a really big one. That one kind of snuck under the radar when I first started playing as Marley. So if it's a building or a unit, you basically can't rely on building them. Because not only do you have minus one production from your mines, but you also have a production penalty on buildings and units. So you're going to have to buy that stuff, which is where their extra income comes in handy. Um, they have the Suguba, which is a unique commercial district. And it means that units, buildings and districts are 20% cheaper to purchase with gold and faith in that city. They also gain plus two gold bonus for each adjacent holy site, and plus two gold bonus from a tile containing a river edge, and plus one for every two adjacent districts. I don't know if that's standard for oops, commercial districts. Um, I'm going to be very rusty at this, by the way, um, but I kind of hope it is. And then they have the Mandakalu Cavalry, who are an unique medieval era unit which replaces the knights. I've never got that. I haven't survived long enough. Um, so we'll see what they're like. Trader units are immune to being plundered if they are within four tiles of Mandakalu cavalry and on a land tile. Ooh, interesting. 
That's very interesting. Combat victories provide gold equal to 100% of the base unit's base combat strength. So they kind of work like privateers but on land. Oh, I'm kind of excited about it. I hadn't actually read any of their unique unit stuff. Um, now, I'm like I said, I'm not exactly on point right now. So this is either going to be king or emperor. I got my f head stomped in re royally on emperor, so we're going to go king. I'm not a mastermind at Civ 6. I'm definitely no Quill 18 at this. Um, so yeah, that. Standard game, continents. Sure. And then we're going to go on a standard map size, because I'd kind of like to see things built up a bit. And I think everything else I'm just going to leave at standard. Disaster intensity is fine. City-states are fine. And then a bunch of AI leaders. I'm not going to add any more, because they actually seem to be relatively well... <laughs> ban crabs. Well, I haven't got whales yet, uh, Dormonster. <laughs> I was actually watching that video yesterday. Oops, I didn't actually mean to press start, but okay, we're going to start. Love Gathering Storms, a great DLC so far. Yes, I've really been enjoying it, even though I've had my face stomped in repeatedly at this game. So I have not played any of Rise and Fall. So, like, the governors are new to me. The. From the first stirrings of new. life beneath water, to the great beasts of the Stone Age, to man taking his first upright steps, you have come far. Now begins your greatest quest. From this early cradle of civilization on towards the stars. Mansa Musa, great king of Mali, you are blessed with wealth beyond comprehension, yet you remain uncorrupted. Raise your eyes from the marketplace to the heavens and satisfy your heart's great yearning for peace. Protect the prosperity of your people and history will write your name in golden letters. So, who were you playing as, Dormonster? Have you, like, played? I'm, I'm gonna guess you have if you're saying I like it. He doesn't die in this one. Actually, in the trailer, he does. <laughs> there was a, um, like, interview with Sean Bean after he'd done recording all of this stuff, and the interviewer actually said, hey, how do you feel about having died in the trailer? And he looked so hurt! He looked so hurt! <laughs> It's like, what? A die? He comes back in the other subsequent trailers, but yes, he definitely dies in that one. Oh, here we go. We can begin. Desert! But, desert with hills. See, that sucks. And also being this close to Tundra, this is an awful starting position. Uh, we get stone. Stone is good. Because stone uses quarries, not mines, which means we don't have the production penalty with stone. So this means we'll actually be able to get districts up and running. We're on a river, which is good, because our commercial hubs are better on rivers. We have mountains, which are good for campuses and holy sites. I think what I might do is send you off that way, just to have a look around. Uh, that didn't really help. I don't want to be this close to the tundra. Tundra stinks. I'm, I'm going to have to do the thing which you really shouldn't do and move the settler. Oh man, that's a lot of mountains. <laughs> Instant barbarian. Oh, this is going to be a short playthrough. <laughs> this is going to be a very short playthrough. Even more mountains. And this is all mountain uh, desert with hills. See, I kind of want to show off their unique mechanics. Hills are fine, I think. Not real. Well, regular hills, yes. Desert hills? <laughs> I think I'm going to move up like one more. Although, here we can get the water mill. Yeah, I'm going to have to do this. I hate doing this. But that is an awful start position. I really want to have flat desert. Like, the whole thing about Mansa Musa's Mali is flat desert. It's really important.
From the first stirrings of life so sorry, water, you're going to be hearing this again. <laughs> to the great beasts of the Stone Age. To man taking his first upright steps, you have come far. Now begins your greatest quest. From this early cradle of civilization on towards the stars. Mansa Musa, great king of Mali, you are blessed with wealth beyond comprehension, yet you remain uncorrupted. Raise your eyes from the marketplace to the heavens and satisfy your heart's great yearning for peace. Protect the prosperity of your people and history will write your name in golden letters. Come on. You, of course, were Suleiman. Not uh, Theodore. I watched that video as well. I, I was on a bit of a door monster binge uh, last night. Um, because of all the Civ 5 and Civ 6 videos that you were doing. I really hope you guys do a Gathering Storm one. Because those really are awesome. And the evil eyes you give the new Suleiman guy. Genius. God damn it! Ah! Ah, this is fine. This is better. We have a couple of mountains to deal with the Holy District. So, like, that's probably a decent location. We have some desert, and it looks like there's a little bit of flat desert. We're not going to have the faith bonuses, which is going to slightly change how I play. We have a bunch of jungle, which I'll probably cut down, because Mali is not a very good tech sieve. Uh, the river and the grain is excellent. We have stone again for the production, and diamonds. Ah, oh, this Mali don't use gold, we use diamonds. Yeah, we're going to build right there. And there we go, we have built Niani. And we're still on the river, which means we can get the water mill. Uh, we're going to have farm there, probably these two and this one as well. So that is going to be some good food production. Yeah, this is a much better start. It's not as good as the uh, start I have in my single player game, but it, it's, it's, it's good enough. And to start out, I think we're going to go as scout so we can actually have a look around. Because finding more desert is going to be important for our expansion plans. Uh, we do have sheep. So we might want animal husbandry. Uh, there are quite a lot of hills, so this is going to be a more mining playthrough than I've done before. Uh, which is fine, because I've done a very faith-heavy playthrough, and I don't think that's going to be feasible here, because of the lack of flat desert near us. In the one that I was playing, I was right next to flat deserts, and I was producing a, just a ridiculous amount of faith from the start of the game. That's not going to be happening here. Um... Or pottery, which allows us to harvest wheat and rice. Now, the harvest is where you destroy the resource, so I don't particularly want to do that. So, uh, what's the requirement for irrigation? Irrigation is just plantations. That is not important here either. Quarrying could be, which I think is mining? Yeah... Although it's going to take our borders some time to expand to that. No, I think we're going to... Oh, actually, the other thing we could do is build a granary. We're going to have no time for building buildings. We build them super slow. Like, the start for Mali is slow. It's really slow, and it's very easy to get behind. But you should be able to catch up fairly quickly, if you don't die. Which is likely. Yeah, we're only going to have the one flat desert. Maybe I should have moved up to here, but then that's not flat desert. No, the flat desert only counts. Hang on. Flat desert is only for the trade routes, right? Adjacent desert and desert with hills. So we could have used that. It's just the flat desert which counts for trade. So this is actually going to be a really bad trading city. And it doesn't get much better. So there might be a little bit more desert over on that side. I'm not sure. Okay. Butting right up to the coast over here, that's fine. Haven't really played a naval Marley before. The Bani River. This is one of the things I really like, is it all automatically name mountain ranges and rivers and stuff based on which nation you're playing as. So you have the Sankaran River over there and then the Bani River over here. Somewhat surprised we haven't seen the Niger. The Niger is the one that we usually start next to. Like, every game that I've played, Mali has started next to a river, so we have a very high chance of starting with a river in this. 
You should set your map options, the match button and the minimap to see the yields and all that. I don't really need to see that. Uh, unless I have a settler, or if I'm in the city itself. Well, you can see it there. I'm fine with this. This is how I usually play it. Um, kill the scout. Kill the scout before he finds us. Murder, murder, murder. I really wish Civ wouldn't make geography specific civs. It really hampers things. I kind of like it. I mean, the earlier ones I don't think particularly were, but the newer ones are, and it means I can kind of do some more interesting things mechanically. I do rather wish we were, like, a tile further north, though. Because if we were there, we would reach all the way up to here and we'd have four deserts. Nice hills. Yeah, we'd have these four. That's also hills. Three, then. So that would be plus three gold for all international trade routes. Which would definitely be nice. Ooh, more grain. And we have a scoot. So let's start scooting a boot. And we can build a new thing. This is always where the... It's difficult. I think I'm going to go with a slinger just because I don't want to die. I am fond of pigs. Dogs look up to us. Cats look down on us. Pigs treat us as equals. You already have a few new ideas based on the DLC. Yes! Brought back Suleiman, so of course I had to play as him, got to ban the crabs. But did you establish boat Mormonism, or denounce Venice? Oh, and actually, one thing which I will say, I don't know if you caught my intro, but Mali is basically the new Venice. Yes, they get more cities, but they are so trade orientated. it's, it's kind of cool. I, I actually like the way they've done it. Yeah, which is why I'm playing as Mali right now. Because Venice was my favourite game. I was totally on Venice's side during all of those uh, episodes. And if you don't know what on earth I was talking about, I'm going to go ahead and link Dormonster because their channel is awesome. Oh. Does that work? That does work. So if you want to see what on earth I'm talking about, go over to that and check out some of their Civ 5 and Civ 6 videos. They're excellent. All right. Um, Scout can go down here. Actually, I think I was going to go across the river, wasn't I? Oh, well, got distracted. Um, chance of killing a unit with a slinger is certainly possible. I think, however, I'm going to go for the mining. Let's see if we can get some of those up and running. Sooner rather than later. Come back here! Ooh, horses. Didn't even know we could see horses yet. Interesting. Just wondering, will the next stream also be Civ 6? The streams today will be Civ 6, yes. Hello, barbarians. Should kill you. Or not. Uh, that's fine too. And if I go either of these tiles, he's almost certainly going to attack me. So I'm going to take the safe route. I don't want to get attacked. At his best, man is the noblest of all animals. Separated from law and justice, he is the worst. All right, so we have got some policies, and considering what we're fighting right now, I kind of suspect we're going to need that combat strength when fighting barbarians. Like, this is a super early barbarian fight. Ordinarily, I try and go for the double experience of a recon. And then the other one... Ah, oh, now this is a harder choice. With Mali, this can be a fantastic opener. Because you get faith from the start of the game for desert tiles next to your capital... You can really get the Pantheon and the Religion stuff going super, super early. Now, we are gaining one uh, faith for the desert here. So we, are, we have already got a head start. So we could double down on that and try and get a Religion and go for the Holy District early on. We do have Mountains, so we can get some fairly decent Holy Districts. Although, it's just occurred to me. The two tiles, which are adjacent to the two mountains, are, of course... Sheep and diamonds. Actually, there's one here and one here. Okay, we're not terribly off. 
Except, yeah, quite a few of the tiles which are adjacent to the Sodding Mountains are in really bad locations. And then we have this one here. That's probably going to be the campus. Maybe the holy site. If we have the adjacency there, you get... If we went for the river goddess for the extra amenity, then this would actually be a fairly holy, good holy site location. Or if we went for the desert one, we could place it here. Or if we went for the desert pantheon, place it like here and that'd be plus one, two, three, four, five faith. Um, so I think we probably are going to go for the high faith start. And see if we can get that religion going. Especially if we can get a golden age. Like, it is huge for Mali if we can get a golden age in the classical era. If we can't, it really does set things back quite a lot. But then again, we have a lot more mines than I'm used to, so we shall see. Um, well, either way, I want to get to early empire. Well... One thing I don't remember is whether these bonuses reduce the cost. Because we're not building settlers. It would take too long. We have to buy them. I don't think this reduces the cost. So early empire is actually less useful. I think we actually want to go for mysticism. Oracle is very good for us. It's very, very good. Yeah, we want to go towards mysticism early. Okay. And then I have to... See, that's going to kill you now. This is a bad time for everyone. I can't believe you survived on, like, one hit point. There's nothing I can do about that. Ooh, Cardiff. Uh, yeah, we're going to go for this. Instead of the plus one production in all cities, this would mean that we build stuff quicker. Obviously, that's what building does. Actually, have not done that? Oh, I can kill you and survive. There we go. Plus five. It helps. Can't believe we got that beaten up fighting a freaking scout. I know we were in bad terrain the entire time, but still. Trigger the Eureka for archery. Well, once we have a slinger, we can do that. And you have a promotion available. I think we're going to need to use this. So we're going to grab a battle cry. And then we're going to heal up. Ooh, flat desert. That's Oddly, what I'm talking about. It appears not to be the scar of a meteorite, but a deeply eroded dome with a rainbow-inspired color scheme. That's huge, because that gives us zero points. So finding that unnatural wonder is really, really important. Our civilization has accomplished something. Right, I'm going to turn those off. Give me a second. Discovering a natural wonder has inspired the people with the majesty of the universe. Knowledge of astrology has been boosted. I've never actually discovered a second continent early on, so that's not going to be happening. Uh, Eye of the Sahara, what does it do? Oh, you can actually move across it. And we're in North America, apparently. Three tile natural wonder provides plus one production. After the game reaches the atomic era, it produces an additional production and three science. So this is looking really weirdly like an excellent se second city site. Possibly down here, just for the connectivity. Oh, yeah, there's barbarians there. Um, but that's a lot of flat desert. That's going to mean a lot of trade. And if we have the Eye of the Sahara right here, I am liking this. I am liking this a lot. And, as I said, we have gained era points as well. I'm going to go and turn the advisor off. See, I just had it set for Rise and Fall and Gathering Storm. Just so I could learn the new tidbits, but I think I'm there now. First discovery of natural wonder, plus three era. Tech boost to astrology. Either the Sahara. Tribal village. City state. City state quest. And city state meeting bonus, which gave us the envoy. Oh, we met Akkad as well. Akkad's giving us plus two production for building units. And you're giving us plus two production for building wonders, buildings, and districts. That's very helpful. Because one of the things you will notice that we do not suffer a penalty on is wonders and districts. The buildings in the district, yes, we have a penalty, but for the wonders, we don't. This is really good. This is really, really good. Um, right, so we have a slinger. And we still need to get that kill with the slinger. I think it's time for a settler. 
and I'm going to stay here until you're fixed up. In my um, single player game, I had a basically where the eye of the Sahara is right now, I found the Black Sea, no, the uh, Dead Sea. And if you station a unit next to the Dead Sea, it heals up fully. That was so useful earlier. A builder! Oh, hello! Good start. And we have a promotion available as well, so I think I'm going to move one more. And then use that promotion. Faster movement on woods and rainforest. There seems to have been quite a lot of it up there. So being able to get through that would be super helpful. And we can farm the wheat. Do it. Farming a resource is giving you appreciation of the importance of irrigating your crops. Knowledge of irrigation is advanced. What are the suzerain bonuses? That is a good question. So for a card, three envoys and more with the civilization. Malay and anti-cavalry units deal full damage to city's walls. Without battering rams or siege towers. It's kind of good. And then this one is plus two power for every harbour building. Uh, Cardiff's not going to be useful until, like, late game. Um, so one of the things that I should mention, like, I, I don't know how familiar you guys are with previous sieves. Um, but power production has been completely changed. It's now based on the fuel output of resources like oil and coal. Don't ask me how that works, I don't know. And then there's also when you get iron and horses, it doesn't count as an upkeep, it's a construction thing. So for every iron resource you gain, you gain like plus two iron per turn and then that's added to a stockpile. You then use the stockpile to build those units. So for example, a swordsman will now cost 20 iron. So you need to make sure you have 20 iron in your stockpile to build the swordsman. And that really helps with trading resources between civilizations because now you just say, hey, I want 20 iron from the Spanish. And Spain goes, here, have 20 iron. You then go, thank you very much, without actually producing iron yourself. Build your swordsman and then you don't need to worry about maintaining that iron every single turn. It's, it's just a one-off payment. So with the tribal village, we also gained one era score. So we are up to four of the 12. We've tech boosted irrigation. Cool. Right, so we've built on that. We do have animal husbandry, so we're going to go over here and build on you. And you can head over this way. That's a freaking enormous desert. I'm in love. So it definitely Who deserves looks more credit than the wife of a coal miner. Like our main capital is not going to be the trading city. It's going to be one of these. Probably this city. Like imagine if we built the city like here and then got Petra. Quill's going to hate playing as Marley because Petra is actually super useful for them. Okay, so we still not killed a unit with the Slinger, though. We're going to go and clear out that Barbarian camp, so we will do soon, TM. Or we can go for Astrology, which would unlock the Holy Site. We want to get a district early. This is important because the district means you get more era points, and we want to have that classical Golden Age. It's really going to be helpful, trust me. Especially now that we know we're going to have cities in the desert, which means a lot of early faith. An awful lot of early faith. Hey, Wolfman. Are we playing Civ for the rest of the week or alternating between this and Total War? Do I have something else planned? I'll be doing Total War tomorrow. I'll be doing the E4 stream on Sunday. Uh, beyond that, I don't know. I'm still kind of hoping that Twitch gets back to me and says what the hell is going on. Um, but I'm fairly sure that the push for partner is over. It's failed. Uh, in which case, I'll be back to my usual shenanigans. One does get full production as Marley, so Petra is easier to build than buildings and units. Yep, exactly. This is an enormous desert. I like it. I like it a lot. And there don't seem to be any other civilizations around yet. Uh, that's the warriors. The warriors healed up, so let's start moving you two down here. You'll be able to see a little bit of that area as well. Let's get the pasture up. Eureka for horseback riding. With animals now domesticated into pastures, it's time to learn to ride. And I 
think we should go and have a look-see up here. Oh, I'm going to travel village. Let's go to that. 